Good morning. My name is Matthew Shortsma. I'm a semantic security consultant here at ITS Partners. This morning I want to talk to you about two products from Symantec. The first is Quarantine Folder, which is part of the, the SEP client. And the second is the Central Quarantine Server. It's another part of, of SEP. It's kind of like a, a buddy of SEP, a good friend of SEP. I want to talk about both of them this morning because we've been getting a lot of questions about both of them from several people. A lot of unknowns about what each is, how do I use them, is it useful to change any settings, should I use the default? So I'm going to talk about all that this morning and hopefully clarify a lot of that for our viewers. So the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit is the quarantine folder. If you're not familiar with it, <clears throat> it's just a set feature that places a secured folder on the client machine and that folder is just kind of, think of it as like a vault for bad files. Uh, when, when SEP says, hey, that file is kind of acting weird or it's meeting a few definitions or its behavior is acting strange, it might be a virus, might be a Trojan, might be malware, send it to the quarantine server. Because I don't know, I'm not sure about it yet. Send it to the quarantine server. I'm sorry, the quarantine folder. And inside the quarantine folder, it'll sit and as new virus definitions come in, SEP will continually, every single time a new virus definition comes in, new update, SEP will re evaluate everything in that folder and say, you know what, according to new virus definitions, I know that's not a virus now, restore the file. And honestly, that's a great feature of SEP that's, that you can probably run just, you, you can run well with that, but that's why we have Central Quarantine Server, is it's not the best option. Central Quarantine Server is pretty much just a network-wide version of that folder. What you do is when there's a bad file and you're, you know, it goes to the quarantine folder, as the administrator, you're like, cool, you're not seeing any of that happening. You're like, oh, cool, there's, you know, it's happening, but I don't know what to do with that folder. I don't know what to do with that file. I don't know what clients are downloading. Maybe there's a client who's just sitting there, a user who's just, you know, continually downloading viruses. Maybe they don't know it, and I definitely don't know it. I need some way to see how each user is interacting. I need statistics. I need to be able to, to have a mental picture of what's going on in my network as far as bad files are concerned. And that's where the central quarantine server comes in. Now, in SEP, you can set, you can tell your quarantine folder to act certain ways. You can change the default settings, you know, instead of, if you don't want the viruses or whatever bad files are in there to delete after 30 days, you can change all that. But the big thing you can change is if they're going to report their quarantine items to the server. And the big advantage of that is, of course, the network down view. You can see exactly where viruses are coming from. Uh, if there's like a widespread virus outbreak, you don't have to worry about uh, kind of guessing who's the problem or where the problem's coming from, just update virus definitions and oh, you got the problem now. It's like, are you sure? Let's know for sure. Let's get quarantine server in here. And that's one big, one big advantage. But being able to have that quarantine server and have all their samples, all the virus samples sent there, that's the other big one. Is now you have, let's say, uh, client A is saying, you know what, I think I'm finding viruses. Client B is getting the same files and based on policies, it has no idea that's a virus great. Now you have a client that's saying, I, you know, I have a virus, and you have a client over here that's saying, that's not a virus, I'm just going to let it sit there. That's obviously a problem, especially if client A was right, and it is a virus. So it puts it in the quarantine folder, sends it all to the quarantine server. Quarantine server says, you know what, that's a virus, client A was right, B, you treat client A's definition of a virus as true and quarantine that file, or, you know, take care of it pretty much. And the other benefit of that same kind of idea is that you have all your network stuff going to one spot. If your quarantine server can't take care of it, it can send it to, it can send it to semantic security response. And semantic security response can say, you know, okay, we know for sure we've, you're the fourth corporation to send that in. And that is definitely not a virus. Go ahead and just tell all your clients it's fine. And it'll report back to the central quarantine. Quarantine comes back to the folder and says, yep, that's fine. Semantic says it's cool. And on the exact opposite side of that, imagine that is a virus and your entire network isn't sure of it. Now, Semantic says, you know what? We've seen that 100 times now. That is definitely a virus. Sends it to the quarantine server. The quarantine server says, yep, it's a virus. Sends it to all the clients. And they say, yep, you know, the, we need to change the virus definitions. We know for sure that's a virus now. And all it is is pretty much just speeding up your remediation process. So in the end, really, why, why do you want such a quarantine server? You get quarantine folder if you have SEP. So that's not really a question if you want it or not. You're kinda, you kind of have it already. So now that you have it, are you utilizing it properly? Do you want such a quarantine server? And hopefully your answer is yes, especially if you're having a virus outbreak. And it's not really one of those things that you wanna just have because you have a virus outbreak, you wanna have it before the virus outbreak starts. 
as soon as that hit, because it, it, if, if it happens, if it happens without quarantine server, getting it isn't going to fix your problem. You already have the viruses. What you need to do is be prepared for a virus outbreak. And that's the big selling point on central quarantine server is that it helps you stop an outbreak or remediate an outbreak before it gets out of control. So in conclusion, quarantine folder you're stuck with, you ha already have it. Why not make the full use out of it? Why not get a central quarantine server? Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Again, my name is Matthew Shortsma. And if you have any questions or concerns about this product or any other set products, feel free to contact me and have a great day.